Welcome everyone, and uh, so uh, it was a kind of a surprise to be invited uh, by a to speak about this topic. And uh, so as Paula said, I'm an artist working mostly with performance. And uh, definitely I have to say that it was a surprise, but I always thought that performance has a lot to do with gossip, you know, because uh, uh, I work with performance mostly with score, that then I pass to interpreters, so dancers and actors. And in a way, I really like the idea that what I'm passing to the score is a kind of gossip that then is going to be reverberating again and again. Um, one thing I wanted to precise, uh, uh, because I'm an artist uh, in this kind of under the category here of a moderator, I don't like the word moderator at all, especially in this kind of panel that I'm a man moderating three uh, women. And so I also start the idea that uh, this is the score of, uh, of, this, uh, of this tour, to so not have a moderator. And uh, uh, I just thought about three topics around gossip. And uh, so I want to share the dialogue with, uh, with them and maybe with the audience as well about this strong topic connected to the, to the gossip. So the first topic is about uh, gender issue. How this uh, idea that the gossip also is something related to women, to a female universe, but actually gossip has been uh, uh, proposed mostly by men. If you have to think about the gossip, the first idea in the history of art is Giorgio Vasari. And, uh, <laughs> and also about to think about other, other men, you know, even in the cinema, Kenneth Anger was one influential reference for me, and it was it did Hollywood Babylon, that is basically a book of gossip, but again a man speaking about many fe uh, female figures. So, this is the first topic I want to share. The second topic is uh, related to art. So how the gossip is influencing the art, also because we are in a context of art fair. So can I, gossip can influence the art market, the work of an artist, the figure of the art, the different figure in the system. So art and gossip, let's say. And the third topic is uh, the relation with the, with the media, especially with the social media, uh, before, was I was writing books, and now we are relating gossip in many different ways. Also, I'm thinking, of course, about Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all this kind of uh, new media, new language. That again, they are really language has to do a lot with gossip as well. So that's why I want to share this topic. So, and my maybe my position is to enter in the dialogue. And also sometimes if uh, we go too far in terms of time and very far from the topic, we will be jump back to the topic. And uh, the third thing is I'm not introducing the speaker because I think also gossip has to do a lot with uh, personality and personal uh, relation and also intimacy. So if uh, the other uh, fellow speaker wanted to introduce themselves, they're more welcome. And so that's the thing. Let's start to speak about these three topics together. Okay? We start? Yeah. Um, I'd say gossip is essential. I mean, it's a, uh, one of the modern, contemporary way of communication. Um, I would uh, not, I, I'm, I'm not so sure that I would uh, confinate uh, uh, the meaning of gossiping uh, uh, in a gender or um, maybe, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's a path that, that might start, you know, from uh, uh, one sex going to another. But um, um, we are in the time of uh, the I like, the likes uh, culture. I mean, uh, uh, and, uh, and this is like the way we, um, uh, news are contam contaminating and, and creating like uh, uh, our way to uh, perceive or to take in consideration things, even if we didn't think before until a few seconds before that they, they were so valuable and, 
and so um, so I mean uh, important to be considered. Uh, so I would say it's like a, a democratic form uh, of uh, communication um, that of course uh, uh, um, has made uh, the, the difficult and the easy uh, uh, much closer than they were before and uh, I mean it's like uh, is land, no? And uh, I definitely believe. I mean, I've been thinking about this fair, for instance, uh, by gossiping. I mean, this 25 five year has been creating. Uh, I've been creating lots of uh, new collectors. I mean, the gossip was uh, the way to uh, to approach this world and uh, so what what I, what shall I look at or what and uh, it was like oh uh, you go there you make this and uh, and, um, and it's definitely important because uh, it's a very crowded world in which even if we are uh, knowledgeable we feel lost uh, I would pass the answer to my colleagues because I don't know, no. okay, this is what uh, more or less I, my first reaction. Okay, um, okay. Um, my name is Ana Misa and I'm the managing director of at Super Magazine. Uh, we are quite far from the gossip stuff. Um, our magazine is a digital magazine that it comes from um, collector's guide, so we're based on uh, uh, the best galleries or museums or, or foundations. But I think that gossip, it's something that for sure is something positive and can be also something really negative, above all in the fields of contemporary art. Um, I think the same things about that. It, it's not something that deals with genders, because uh, every, every time we think that women are the producer of gossip. But men and women just try to do the same things just to use the gossip for uh, their uh, objective or something like this. So I think that gossip just can be used from such into the social media, Instagram, Facebook, just to put uh, something that is very complicated, like contemporary art. Uh, it's like philosophy, it's like literature sometimes. And also uh, a public that comes from the common stuff can just be uh, informed about something that it's curious about. And uh, you have the bad gossip that it's something that deals with the, the deep system of contemporary art. So sometimes uh, I mean, a, deep, um, a bad gossip can just destroy a gallery, for example, or an institution or a museum. So I don't think that gossip is something that deals with art only, for sure, but also it's something that deals with human beings. Yeah. So the, part, the important thing is that if you're smart or not, and uh, this kind of, uh, of thing just divides the world into two different points. The first one that deals only with gossip the second one that deals with quality, also above all contemporary art, and the uh, presence of the artwork as the, the first important thing. That can spread the message into the world, not only the world of contemporary art. Um, yes, my name is Cordelia. I'm the founder of The Art Gorgeous, um, which is a um, yeah, magazine merging the art world with lifestyle and uh, especially also female empowerment. So um, we try to make the art world more accessible and I think gossip is quite interesting also in this regard that you can say that it really makes or gives you a certain access in some ways because it really um, yeah, enables you to also, you know, comment or to get to interact with people, um, especially via social media that eventually you would never meet in person. 
Um, so there's obviously also the risk and also the, the risk of this kind of bad gossip we just heard about, but I think generally there's also a very interesting and positive dynamic because um, there is this extremely um, fast pace and there's this, there's, you know, you click on a button and spread the news through your whole network, um, which was not, you know, possible earlier on, but I think the dynamic behind gossip and behind these new forms and platforms for conversations are actually quite interesting. And also, in terms of the art world, lower the barrier to kind of, you know, find an access point to it. And I think, yes, um, as you also heard from my colleagues, it's always important to select and, you know, to obviously filter the information you get, but I think it's a, it's a quite interesting um, point to also say um, that, you know, it has a certain dynamic. Yes, I, I think also gossip is really related to intimacy, as I said before, and uh, when Paula invited me to the talk, we had a little chat on the phone, and uh, she, she mentioned Tom Wolf, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the writers, and then after his book, uh, um, the, there was a film called The Bonfire of Vanity. And uh, after the talk, the, the, the phone call uh, we had together, I rewatched the film. I don't know if you, 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 you don't, you, it's a film, it, uh, 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 yeah, well, basically it's the story of, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of complicated relationship and then it is also set in a, in a trial that everything out of, of the, the language of reality is actually what made the writer about the case really important. It's a lot about also relationship, sex relationship, power, it's set in New York in the 80s. And when I watched the film, it was for me like really, uh, interesting to see how everything about Instagram, everything about the social media that we have now in our hand, in our pocket, it was in the movie. You know, all this kind of idea that there is no more layer between our persona and our personality. So, and this definitely has to do about gossip and how we relate. Always we have a mask in front of us and we relate to the others with this mask. And the gossip sometimes even transforms the mask. Sometimes we are the one transforming our mask and sometimes instead the mask is already transforming by itself. What do you think about this relation with the intimacy? the masking and also, you know, the social media that we use and they are in our pocket every day? Um, I believe it is true. I mean, uh, um, differences are uh, beca becoming uh, more and more subtle and so things, things even uh, in the way we communicate and in, uh, they are becoming um, uh, more and more fluid. I mean, uh, so I, it's very hard to, um, at this point, to create, you know, like a, a clear section, uh, uh, categories, and, uh, and, um, and somehow, I mean, gossips or, or rumors or the way we want to call them, um, are the, the symptom of uh, mm, this uh, uh, non-necessity of being uh, profound and, uh, and, uh, and, and somehow to give like uh, to our way to communicate another more, uh, you know, high pop, uh, rapid <laughs> uh, sound, you know, more like fragmented, uh, short, and uh, I mean, this is not, I don't mean it's positive, but uh, we all, we, we have all learned, I mean, we are all mutants in the way we perceive and we elaborate what we perceive and uh, so uh, it's like something more like, uh, uh, there are sort of uh, thing, you know, it's like uh, a new, a new idea of mosaic, 
uh, which is the digital era mosaic of um, I think so, but uh, if you'd like to play, Instagram and social media are a perfect way. You can just be what you want to be, but I think that sometimes, not, not only in private life, but also in contemporary art, yeah. uh, you have to pay attention to the consequences. Oh, no, no. Because um, always um, you're deciding what you're going to show, but you don't know the effect. Yeah. So for you, it's something important or it's something that uh, can be something very good, very precious, but maybe you got a hater yeah. that for no reason why just uh, put your Instagram in a very bad way, in a word, a private word, or for example, the word of contemporary art, and you cannot work no more, you are yeah, yeah. the person, okay. So I think that you have to pay really attention to use social media, for sure, in private life and working, and also uh, you have to take a plan of what you're gonna do with your image and with your gallery, with your museum, and the person you're talking to. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. I think, yeah, also what is what is quite um, remarkable is also the footprint that you actually leave because, I mean, all this information, we, we don't know how long, you know, it will stay somewhere in the digital sphere, probably uh, forever. So I feel this is also something that, um, you know, you first need to learn to kind of consider before you post stories or before you share images that if you really want that this information stays there forever. Um, and I think, well, this is something also when you kind of juggle private accounts and business accounts that you really need to, you know, kind of learn to make a separation. Um, and uh, probably this is, from my perspective, kind of the biggest challenge. Um, what is quite interesting when we really connect now more the gossip and the art world, there is one artist, Amalia Ullmann, who basically kind of got just known because she created those gossip works on her Instagram. So at some point she was pregnant or she seemed pregnant. And the whole, you know, art world was sharing those images and reposting and it in the end it turned out that she just, you know, it was just a performance and she basically made, you know, used this as a as a kind of it was basically an artwork. So it's also funny if you realize that you are trapped in some ways and that you maybe also follow the kind of opinion that in the end is not true. So uh, I think in terms of art, the gossip has a very interesting component. What uh, emerged like in the little conversation that we, we had, in, like something that really took my attention, it was the word of democracy and democratic from Ayutja, and also what you say, you know, like uh, the, the power relationship that you have when you're doing gossip, and also when you're mentioning an artist that is also very good, you know, because we normally think, you know, like other people are making gossip about art, that artists are making a lot of gossip through art. And also for me, art is a very political art. So I think there is a really strong connection to the world that have emerged from now, the relationship between gossip and political art. You know, I also take the responsibilities. And for me, as an artist, that now, now that after the talk has started now, I feel more at my place to speak about the gossip. It's because when I produce art, when I produce an art piece, I always have to be responsible for the art itself, the object, and the gossip that is going to start after I put something into the society. So I think gossip has a really political value. Yeah. What do you think about this? I think what is also quite interesting is that you see if certain kind of leading figures from the art world, for example, post artist recommendations or visit them in the studio and share it, how in a way also they have the power to, you know, really spread the word about those artists in their network. And I think also this kind of power is so, you know, new but also interesting that people really follow certain people's, you know, social media to check which artists did they collect, which artists did they visit, which artists, you know, do they share. So I think also if we really talk about the art 
world and this is also a very powerful tool to push or you know also kind of boost a certain selected artist. Uh, we should say uh, it is dangerous but it is not that dangerous. I mean I uh, I mean I answered to what you were saying I don't believe um, is creating is putting in any risk you know the it's just a form of uh, communication is not is not um, and uh, when I say democratic is because uh, it, it can it can be spoken and communicated at, at different levels uh, and of course uh, you can be in control to, you can know the art of the gossip or you can be a little bit uh, more uh, I mean uh, in the way of knowing or you know, but uh, um, it's very useful you know because um, uh, somehow is um, making the substance to survive uh, giving to substance uh, the rhythm of the contemporary and so I don't mean it's the only possibility but it's like a good weapon or a good instrument I mean what is quite interesting I have been based in China um, for, for a very long time and also to see how different how culturally different and probably the the thing of the usage of gossip of social media is, is, is quite significant. In China, everyone is on WeChat. Um, probably most of you know that. And it's kind of comparable to Facebook. So one would share, you know, photos as its moments. And then, you know, also in between minutes, it would spread across your network. And for example, again, connecting it to the art world, you have so many artists who announce their new gallery collaborations or something just with a pure photo because it shows them having lunch with David Werner or something. And then after, you know, half an hour, already 500 people would share it or thousands of people would share it and the rumors would start whether or not now this new collaboration has been made or not. So in a way, I think it also kind of replaces news um, or for a lot of people it does replace news, which then, you know, kind of can be tricky because obviously it's not research, it's really coming from one person's um, powerful social media tools, so you probably really need to digest and, and, and challenge for yourself whether this makes sense or not, but I think a lot of people consume what's happening in a certain industry via social media, not via newspapers. Completely true, I believe so too. Yeah. It's probably very interesting. Body fashion, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, it's the same. But I, I, I feel I, I mean, to Vogue, I was responsible. I mean, uh, my my way to put art on pages uh, has been creating to me a kind of uh, like um, I would say. Um, very good uh, uh, interest, you know, even from the, the fashion brands and uh, that then became like foundation uh, um, uh, I mean just, you know, drawing in these pages something that was uh, um, visually strong and seductive maybe when you get like uh, taken but by things on page or uh, on uh, online it's not necessary you know deeply what they mean but you know that they have an intensity that you didn't know before that it's the first time you like face and uh, I think that was a good thing you know um, uh, it evolved, uh, it, I mean, it was helping to evolve. Um, I mean, I would, I'd say, I thought many times that this hybridation of languages have, has been making things faster, you know, even about genders. 
I mean, I, I thought that if things had to uh, evolve, I mean, through like the social uh, theories, or I mean, we would be, or, or to the church, or I mean, we would be like that, you know, and uh, but, but um, I mean, there's something about in the, in, in the, in the strength of iconography, of uh, pictures, of, that I really trust, you know, and, uh, and that is a form of, that's, that is the gossip, because it's like uh, making, uh, telling history, in a fa taking a fast channel, to give you consciousness of, uh, to make you conscious uh, of your uh, time, you know, of, uh, the time you live in. This, this sense is very important because uh, um, a lot of artists that come from Brazil right now, with Paul Sanero, in the situation that we have now, uh, Opa Vivara, Laura Lima, they use Instagram in this kind of way. So we just put the political message in, a, in another kind of way. So, through art, through um, performing art, through um, Opa Vivara, it's like, it's that group of uh, five person um, works on political and social stuff. But, for example, there is the um, director of the, um, the co-founder, um, Michael uh, Shufu, uh -huh. um, that talks about Instagram and the fact that it's very important, for example, that galleries, foundation museums has got uh, social media, like Instagram, but not every artist has got to have this yeah. kind of social. For example, Teresa Margolis, that works uh, you know, in Mexican uh, uh, problematics, uh, women, and gender, and she doesn't have, um, have Instagram, but uh, her artworks are so important. So, uh, for example, so five. Cool. Yes, that's it. So sometimes galleries and foundation has to keen on social media right. above all than artists. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I was really like because I don't <laughs> no, no, no. I was, I was very, very uh, conscious of what you're saying, but also like, has, like my mind is working as a gossip, so like really, really like really bring me very far from. It's really what you say is really interesting, and then a lot of topics are coming to, together. You know, it's very difficult to translate what actually is is happening to my mind, but it's also very beautiful. Also, it's, I think it's a kind of a beauty of the gossip. You know, that's this magmatic idea that also you mentioned that it's between dangerous and not dangerous, uh, control and under control. You know, deathable and undeathable. You know, you mentioned language. You know, basically. We really make a lot of uh, language to the arts through gossip. With actually this kind of uh, also something that is really coming to my mind is the idea of powerful and totally unpowerful. I think it's also very important to, as you say, there is bad with gossip, but, but sometimes we always have to be responsible. But sometimes we are an artist because we like to be here, and it's very important to sometimes to share the pleasure of the art system through gossip, through art, you know, not always really like take things seriously and have fun. This is something that's really important and fun is a really, has a really important power to the art system. So I think also gossip is about, is, can be also about this I got fun. a question for you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that fun uh, could be always positive? or can be also negative? Definitely, everything can be positive and negative. You know, okay. we can speak about the, the how... Fun in contemporary art, in gossip of contemporary art. What, what is the fun stuff? What do you think? Fun in contemporary art or... What do you mean the gossip? The fun is like actually the story telling, for example. I'm really captivating to know something more, something more personal about it. Having fun, having share, sharing, you know, personality. That sometimes... Yeah, there's a difference. I mean, there's the fun and laughing at, you know. I don't have, it, they, don't, they don't have to be confused, of oh, course. Making and, fun. Uh, yeah, right. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I'm, I love art when they, it makes me laugh. I mean, I think it's a, an, I immediately, I start from masterpiece, then I have to really <laughs> mention it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's uh, an extra power of uh, work of art to like open your art and make you laugh, you know. Like, so, another question, an idea that came, more idea than question, actually. I like, came out, so it's because we are in a country of an art fair, and of course, power is related to money. You know, and uh, I was reading a book about Walter, Walter City, called Pagare and Non Pagare, to pay or not to pay. And basically, it's telling a lot of things, but to really sum up, it's telling, we are all, we as a citizen of the world, we are all working for free for the social media. Basically, we give content for free that before you, they used to pay us to, give, to produce this content that now we're just working for free and even not, not even thinking that. So, is it gossip for free and which is the relation of gossip with, like with, with the money, you know? There's a difference. Maybe and well, I mean, it's, uh, no, I, I'm thinking about it, because there is a difference. It's a point. I think it's also a lot about entertaining. So we give content for free, but we also entertain a lot of people for free, in a way, right? Because we, we you know, schedule our feed, we think of what gains a lot of attention, what people might like. So in a way, I think it's also entertainment that we create. and. Uh, but again, I feel that especially fun is also a very important vehicle to make things accessible. And I think it's always easier for people to enter a certain industry or topic if it makes them laugh and if they, you know, kind of feel they are included and it's not like so abstract or so theoretical that they don't know how really to enter. And, and I feel especially in the art world, this is very well needed. Again, we need to make sure we don't make fun of something in a bad way, but to generally give really lower the barrier and really and enjoy and make people enjoy and make people giving them a really hard bendy love, I think it's great because you know that's also something that includes more people to enjoy art. And especially as from the market perspective, it's still something that not everyone obviously can own or can buy or can enjoy. Um, I feel it's even more important to, to have content that everyone can access. It can be even a spiritual healing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe, I mean, I don't want to be moralistic about finances, or, but of course, um, I mean, uh, um, I connect the, the, the picture of, I mean, the, ne the negative gossip with the, the financial investment. I mean, I don't see that if, you, if you've got a light art and uh, you simply enjoy uh, what you see, uh, you can, uh, I mean, there's a difference. There's a difference, yeah. Because you can manage. You can manage your content. And, and then we go back to what you were saying. That's yeah. it. So if you're going to manage your content, you know the direction of your public. And if, for, for me, um, art, contemporary art, modern art, gossip on uh, art, is, it's beautiful because people just uh, know something that they don't know, something that is very creative and it's very beautiful. But a lot of people don't use that in a pure way. So, but it's, it's okay, it's human being. Yeah, then it's work and it's money. So I can manage a content just to make my gallery uh, grow faster and use Gossi for me and just push away the other gallery that are my uh, competitors, for right. example, uh, to the best artists that I think so, but I use my social media just to push the other one on the other side and take mine at the up level. So I think we, we got two, two choices. And I think that uh, the most of the public, that, that, that they're not inside of the world of contemporary art, are the purest thing. 
because they are open to to share, to know, to be curious about color, about not theoretical stuff. But we can just manage if you're so curious just to be in. And the other part that is for people that just work in that, and they got another mentality, right? So. That's why it's democratic. <laughs> yeah, and, also, the and also thinking about, you know, our relationship and, you know, like the importance of money and all these kind of things, I think fun is very powerful. Fun is a really, like, powerful, I see, when you were mentioned maybe weapon before, I think, you know, like, because, of course, it's not real weapon, or weapon is something really important and yeah. it's a responsibility to, you know, to point the weapon against something. Yeah. Sometimes it's not even against, it's, it's like, you know, like to say no or yes or to say something. Because, yeah. you know, like we are in a spoken verbal language. We are more than, a, going back to gender, I don't it, it define that as a man, as a woman, but I'm, I'm defined as a, as a, a spoken person, producer language. Yeah, a language has, has no gender. Language is everything and most of it Everything, a language is every one of us. And we are free to use it in the yes, way exactly. we like. So this uh, talk was, <laughs> no, was very cathartic, you know, to actually reverse the language of gossip in a way. You know, we start, each one of us has an idea about gossip, and you know, even just the word gossip, maybe even for the audience that participated with us to the talk, it was a little bit to change things around. And I think this is things that gossip what to say, you know, like, even, even a bad gossip can change your life, the idea about someone, Absolutely. in a way like, oh my god, why you have to do that to some person, something like that. I think also, uh, coming quickly back to the language, what is quite interesting that also, especially from via Instagram, gossip is really kind of the language is not even necessary anymore or not so necessary as it was before because you basically have an image and this visual can be so strong that it can contain already all the content and doesn't need any words. So I mean also I think it's something that you remember very easily because if we see a strong visual it's something that really sticks into our mind. It is even the visual power of the words, the written words, and we have different yeah, examples. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions? Yeah, exactly. I wanted to ask them if someone from the audience has any questions. Or comments, or yeah. gossip. Or things. Or... So everyone is happy to use Instagram, social media. No bad gossip, one. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Uh, this is like, uh, no, you know, um, no, this is not, no, I mean, I'm, I don't agree because, uh, I mean, um, gossip were always there, but uh, it's like uh, uh, it, the contemporary gave to gossip and a legitimation. I mean, uh, I would, I would, I would, I would not put a judge. I mean, a, some kind of a, a moral point of view on them. I mean, is they don't deserve to be so so important? You know, they to me. I mean, um, I, I, I think that the point, from my point of view, is the uh, the classification of of the word. I mean, a content is a content. Whatever it is, could be gossip, could be uh, intellectual, could be whatever you want, but it's a content. Right. So, uh, when we talk about what is gossip, what is something, we abstract, we go out of the content, and I think it's a problem. Maybe I agree with For sure that, you know, but, but of course uh, we are in uh, in a uh, in a communication content, so even uh, uh, the use of words is important. I mean, uh, um, uh, good or bad, bad, you know, things uh, evolve, and uh, and um, 
and meaning evolve. So, um, to me, the important is to keep elastic about things. I mean, to be more, uh, of course, I mean, um, do not accepting it um, uh, applied to visual art is like going back to the 60s, the 70s. I, I mean, I don't want to, to mean they were hell. I mean, but it's like another kind of democracy. And it's another, uh, it's a more, uh, how do you say, uh, alphabetical culture. We, are, we got into a digital era that is like, uh, redesigning the and priorities. The that you have, it's not from the 60s or the 70s, you got a content from the 2000s. That means that you read your content on social media. How many people just use books as before, as in the 60s or in the 70s? No, it's completely different. You got content, but you got content. You, you got two types of content. For example, I don't know, uh, an influencer could be uh, Jerry Saltz, that uh, won the um, Pulitzer Prize this year. And it's an art critic, but it's really intellectual. So maybe you, if you got a message from a people like that, people like that, you got a content of a sort. So you got a sort of content. If you have a content from people that just talk just to talk, you got another content. And maybe, yes, but it's very important. Because, because it's democracy, just give you freedom, anyway, they it doesn't back. give you intelligence. Yeah. Even Aubrey's to me work was influencing. I mean, yeah. in the way he has been choosing to put on Instagram to turn again text in images, you know, and doing that. I mean, that was inspiring to me. I mean, I'm like the They are like a little switch, you know. It's a, it's a time about switching to me, and uh, of course, I mean, not what. Whatever we talk about is something we like, or we are like, but um, they make sense in, in the pattern. I want to say that like, I got your point, but for me it's a positive. Uh, your point of what you say is, I think, a positive for you, because it's not problematic to speak about gossip. If we need to speak about problematic things, it's important to speak about the problem, about the failure, about, you know, about, actually, I, I'm really happy about these thoughts because we could have actually, one of my first questions was like, do you have any gossip? And of course, I don't want to do that, that question. I want to speak about the gossip. We can change the words. And even like, words that we think they are bad or good, even gossip, they're not always bad and good, so we need to speak about gossip, I think. It's very important to speak about that. Thank Everyone. you.